to Blissfully Aware, the show in which three opinionated people discuss what's going on in fandom and nerd news in general. I am Bliss, and as always, I'm joined by my two lovely co-hosts, Kelty and Kendra. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Did it again. I croaked. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's okay. I croak almost every time, too. I just, I don't want to be like, like fake peppy. No. Because I'm not a peppy person, so I don't want to be like, <laughs> hey. Hi. But I also don't want to sound completely disinterested. Yeah. And whatever we're about to say. I want people to notice that as the show goes on, my voice goes from hi to, oh, okay, we're talking about this now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like, kind of. I just don't have the heart to fake it even. I can't be like, hey, everybody, because <laughs> I'm not that person. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to do that because that's my customer service shit. And if I'm using my customer service voice, it means I hate you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it also I'm also setting up expectations that I have no intention of living up to. <laughs> exactly. So so anyway, yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Subscribe and comment and hit the bell and care visit, about what we have to say. Visit our Patreon that we don't have. <laughs> Eventually. If Patreon doesn't collapse in on itself. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, fair. once it does, someone will just do it again, and we'll we'll get on the ground floor of that one. <laughs> um, so, y'all like anime? <laughs> I do, actually. I love anime. Like, I... That's a weird question to me, because to me, that's like saying, mm-hmm. do you like movies? Like, it's just a genre. Or it's not even a genre, it's a medium, is what I meant to say. Like you know, a novel or a film or music. It's just a medium that can contain many different genres. So I like some anime, like I like some (laughs) movies and I like some books and I don't like other anime, just like I don't like other movies. So yes, I do like anime because I love animation, especially uh, 2D animation. And before everyone jumps on my dick, I know that a lot of anime is not traditionally hand-drawn, like, two-dimensionally on paper anymore, or even digitally. It's sometimes, like, 3D models that have been cell shaded So yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but I like that it looks like 2D animation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. I went to a fine arts school, and I got in arguments with animation nerds a lot. So I am just always ready to <laughs> defend my point when I'm simplifying something for the sake of clarity. Yeah, so I, I like all, all sorts of anime, and I really bogarted this answer. But I have that big, long-winded, you know, explanation of an answer, because in the West, air quotes, like in, in the Anglosphere, a person who likes anime has a certain sort of stereotype yeah. attached to them. Otaku. Less so now, I guess, because it's kind of gotten really mainstream. But when I was a teenager, in the Mm. 2000s, in the aughts, Mm. anime was super Mm -hmm. obscure. Like, anything that wasn't Sailor (laughs) Moon or Pokemon, Yeah, you either had to watch, like, God, I wasn't in Canada, so I didn't even have, like, Adult Swim like Mm -hmm. you guys had on Cartoon Network. Like, it was just sometimes things were on and sometimes they weren't, and if not, you had to find it on the internet. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't even know how I watched Tenchi Muyo, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't remember how that happened. I thought you said you rented it! It was on Adult Swim, or Toonami. Said- Toonami. Oh, okay. So, when I was a youngin, and I was watching my pirated, fan-subtitled anime on the internet, anime communities then were much more insular, and dominated by more weirdos, oh, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was the, like otaku stereotype which is not totally right. unfounded oh yeah <laughs> like, i was one of them there are folks like that and like if you went to an anime convention sort of before the era of like netflix streaming mm-hmm. and anime like really crossing over into english-speaking countries like it has mm-hmm. it was a kookier place yeah i and was definitely one of the weird kids who like like, like a fucking too mouth much. breather yeah <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and sugarcoat myself. I was a fucking freak. But like, see, the thing is, like, I think that's totally fine if you're like 14, 15, 16. Yeah. Like, those are your cringy years. Be as cringe as you want. Please love be whatever cringe. you want. But when you get to be like 
in your late 20s and 30. Oh, yeah. Like, if you're still a little too into anime. <laughs> I'm probably still a little too into anime, so See, don't, don't take 100% so. of well, my that, advice. But so what I'm saying is, like, I don't think so, because, like, well, you still like anime, and I still like anime. We have other interests and conversations about other things. We do, but I will. I probably would get into an online argument about, like, Yuki versus Kyo or something. <laughs> I mean, that's, I would again, probably still do that. But that's what the internet's for, man. Yeah, true. I mean, I'm I'm cringy in my 30s, so... I Well, I'm not cringy in my 30s because you literally cannot embarrass me. It's impossible. Come at me, scrub lord, I'm ripped. <laughs> I have the power of anime and Jesus on my side. <laughs> I do. What? Okay, not Jesus, actually. <laughs> well, actually, Jesus likes the gays, so go ahead. D- does he kill <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Kelty oh, seems <laughs> pretty certain about it. I don't know. He liked weirdos and prostitutes. Jesus did oh, like the- prostitutes. We're getting off. <laughs> Banan. <laughs> Jesus had bitches. <laughs> God, that is what the fucking kids say nowadays, huh? Like the most recent devastating insult on Twitter, like that's supposed to like ruin someone's life and self esteem is get bitches. Oh, oh, or get, yeah. Get some bitches. I forgot about that, actually. I was just Yeah, I mean, like, like children, like, yeah. 14-year-olds say that. I know. Sad, it's sad 20-somethings really... <laughs> who are trying to be hip. It's really obvious when people say get bitches to me that they've never had a bitch. <laughs> it's weird, because it's one of those things where, like, the irony has gone so far that it's just circled back to sincere. Yeah, I so, can't like, tell So, like, they're anymore. saying it as something like... Ha ha, that's what a misogynist would say, but instead they're just being misogynists. <laughs> yeah, they're just being like, misogynists. Because just they, think, like, okay. they think the solution to this disagreement is if you just got more pussy. Yeah. Which, ironic or not, is misogynist. <laughs> I mean, I've literally watched somebody, I've watched a 14-year-old tell a 20-something to get back in the kitchen and make food for their kids. Yeah. So, like... Oh my god. Y- man, you're not man, being- what of sandwich jokes come back they're gonna oh my god <laughs> this weird sort of ironic quote-unquote cutesy misogyny quote-unquote ironic cutesy homophobia is something that i think generation z is gonna look back on in like two to three years like not long yeah and gonna be super fucking embarrassed <laughs> about you're gonna look back on that in your adulthood and be depressed. And be mortified. <laughs> and unfortunately, like we've said before, like our cringy teenage years are documented on live journal and stuff where no one can really find it or yep. see it. But Locked y'all, and deleted, bitches. <laughs> y'all just take receipts on everything now. <laughs> yeah. So those screen caps, your friends are gonna have them. Or, you know, friends who turn into enemies. Everybody's got a dossier now. It's the fucking Red Scare again. Yeah. God, it's like the fucking Stasi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just do it so that I fucking remember who they are when they it's ended just... up getting suspended on Twitter. Because yeah. Twitter doesn't tell me. Yes. They're just like, this account got suspended and I'm like, I don't remember why I reported them at all. <laughs> Thanks, though. Uh, it's S-worded, Kelly. We don't say that word here. Yes. <laughs> Suspended. Well, just because it, like, focuses, like, you know, the, the spooky Twitter Eye of Sauron on yeah. your account. Yeah, I know. If you're talking about suspensions more. I can't even call myself a dyke on my public account because I'm afraid they're going to snipe me. Yeah, that's what happened to me. A gay woman, I called myself a dyke and Twitter suspended How me. How mm-hmm. dare mm. you. How progressive <laughs> and woke. <laughs> So anyway, we were talking about fucking anime. <laughs> yeah. Well, the person in this story, uh, they also, spoiler, get suspended. But yeah, let's let's crack right on in. Y'all ever heard of a little manga called Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro? Nope, I have not heard of it. It just, I know it's it's Nagitoro, but it sounds like Negitoro, which is one of my favorite sushi rolls. Yeah, it's really good. Oh Tuna and green onions. Hell yeah. <laughs> so this manga was, um, it was adapted into an anime, premiered on April 2021. Oh, so like super recent. Yeah. Because yeah. that's so now. That's now. I well, so, it won't yeah. be now when this episode goes up, but... <laughs> So, let me read you the description for this manga anime. Oh, please do. Lay it on me. Let's go. Lay all the craziness on me. When an introverted male student meets a girl named Nagatoro, his life turns upside down. 
she first quietly observes his reaction to verbal abuse from other high school girls <clears throat> that are not well-meaning, realizes that oddly enough, in his case, it may be exactly what he needs, and so begins a sequence of her teasing him. It soon becomes increasingly obvious to the reader, not him, that her teasing is actually sardonic, well-intentioned, and flirtatious, but he eventually starts to catch on. Mm-hmm. Straight boys are dumb. Yeah. yeah. This sounds like yeah. high school. Okay. So there was some controversy around the manga in which people believed that it encouraged bullying. Sort of okay. in the way that uh, in the early aughts, people believed video games encouraged violence. Yeah, I get you. That was the 90s. It carried over, man. Well, Things didn't stop in 99. True. So when Crunchyroll announced that, you know, they're going to be premiering this anime, a bunch of right-wing anime fans uh, <laughs> got real, real excited about all the leftist tears they're going to drink at all these, you know, <laughs> soy boys pissing their pants about bullying in anime. Got as if it. that's not central theme to a lot of animes yeah mm -hmm. so it comes out and well <laughs> no one cares or people care too much well turns out the right wingers are the ones that are crying because <laughs> as of, always well if only as always but <laughs> the translation for the subtitles has decided to use some more modern words like sus and derp. Derp is one they used. <laughs> very modern. Oh, very, yes. Very cutting edge. And then uh, the other one is scrub. She calls him a scrub at one point. Oh! Yeah. Like, I don't want no scrub. Yeah. A scrub is a guy who can't uh, get no love from me. Also incredibly modern. A hanging term. out the passenger side of his best friend's ride trying to holler at me. <laughs> So yeah, they got hella pissed off. One user in particular, who ended up being the Twitter villain of the day, trending Fun. and everything. Oh dear. Jesus. They had this really stupidly long thread. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I do want to read or the first one. They are long-winded, aren't they? They are yeah. always so long-winded. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So, thread on what at Crunchyroll is doing to hashtag Nagatora. One of the hottest shows out of Japan is unforgivable. Their translations are not no. just lazy. They are deliberately shitty and cringe. Adapted <laughs> by soy bug gamer people to appeal to soy bug <laughs> gamer people and nobody else. <laughs> That's sad. Soy bug gamer people? Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that bad cringy. That's, like, that's something I would say if I were making fun of alt-right trolls. Yeah. Like, I never would have expected them to to claim that rhetoric for themselves. Yikes. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yikes. And so, like I said, it goes on way too long. Ad nauseum. But it ends up... Once it starts blowing up, this person, I guess, reveals their power level too soon and comes out with a, uh, if you're a black slash LGBT weeb, I don't care what you think. Oh! And then goes on to tweet other racist bigoted things, which is fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, it's a good I mean, thing they the don't care what I think. Yeah, I mean, at least this villain of the day was deserving. <sighs> yeah, they were. Right-wing anime fans, huh? <laughs> and what's frustrating is I don't 100% disagree with the idea of not including more, uh, big air quotes, modern language in dubs and subs. I think it's used in a lot of inappropriate ways. But ding dang, I'm not a racist bigot over it. <laughs> well, no, God. Like, here's the thing, is that a lot of times when slang is used in any medium, it, number one, dates it immediately and mm. number two is often used incorrectly like i remember being a teenager and watching stuff supposedly for teenagers and they would misuse terms that i used and i would be like what fucking idiot wrote this <laughs> and like didn't run it past their teenage daughter or whatever like so it has to be done right if yeah. you're gonna be using well, slang and the other thing about slang is that it's very 
localized. Like, yeah. You cannot translate a Japanese slang term literally into English yeah. and have it denote the same sort of connotations. Like, it's... It, it, it means something completely different now. And so I get, like... Because, again, I haven't watched or read this, but I would imagine that, like, kids in high school don't always, you know, talk in their most formal dialect ever. Like, no. we certainly didn't speak the Queen's English in my high school. <laughs> so I would imagine, Barely again, spoken. not knowing anything, that they are translating a lot of, like, very casual speech and slang words and just using, like, the best English approximation. Mm-hmm. Because I've seen that done before. Like, Kelty and I have been watching uh, the 2019 remake of Fruits Basket, because I'd never seen it before, and Kelty really liked it growing up. And there's, like, they haven't quite used anything as, like... <laughs> Heinous as sus. Yeah, they they haven't said, like, sus or anything. But a few times, some of the, like, teenage characters have said same, when I assume the Japanese line is, like, hi, or yosh, like, to mean, like, yes, all right, okay, affirmative. Yeah. And it's just one syllable, and same in English slang means the same, has the same sort of connotation. So, like, yeah, I totally buy that, you know, a teenager would just say same. Because it's not, like, horribly heinous. It's not, it's not like sus, where, like, if you don't know what that means, you would have no idea what they're talking about. Even, like, 20 years from now, someone can watch that and determine what they mean by saying same. (laughs) Yes. There are certain, there's certain slang that does at least still translate, but, like, you know. Like, what is that one (laughs) that was, like, this joke going around whenever um, pre-war Steve Bucky Fick was really big for Captain America and people were like, sometimes I read a pre-war fic and it's like Dames, who scow the 40s! And yeah. it's like, yeah, you kind of have to sprinkle that shit in. You can't just dump it. Yeah, like, because like, then it's just fanfic like, writers would like, way overdo the yeah. 40s slang. Like, they spoke a whole other language or something. <laughs> yeah, if I need <laughs> like, to no, get a like, little... I have done college, university level history classes. I have read newspaper articles and books and research documents from the 30s, 40s, and earlier. I They mostly use the same words that we do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You just kind of sprinkle them in a little bit. You make it all very obvious to tell. Basically, don't use slang so much that you need a glossary of terms in the back like it's Clockwork Orange. Unless Aww. that's unless that's your goal. Like, I'm assuming that it, a dubbed anime isn't gonna want to, like, put a little star, a little asterisk, and, like, explain everything at the bottom of the screen. Do you remember when subs used to do that, though? Yes. Yeah. Like, of sometimes, the, the other side of, like making the translation too accessible yeah. is basically not translating at all and like <laughs> subs like fan made subtitles for anime that was not being officially released in english mm-hmm. um would sometimes do that even if there was like an obvious english word that could be used yeah one that would be big is that they would if characters were like visiting a shrine or something like a sh- traditional shinto or buddhist shrine they would just keep in the words, like, the Japanese words for shrine, and, like, it's not exactly the same, but the English word shrine connotes, like, a sacred holy place. Yeah. Like, it's not perfect, but it's okay, you know? But they would keep the Japanese word, and they would have an asterisk next to it, and then the explanation for the word would be on a different part of the screen, and so you had to pause it and read what the explanation was, because they didn't bother to translate it properly. (gasps) Because (laughs) the idea was that, like, like, you couldn't you couldn't just approximate a translation and like sometimes very rarely i find that like yes there's something so culturally specific that you can't translate it properly Easily, into yeah. english and like not lose something but mm-hmm. i don't think that like just using the word shrine does that <laughs> Well, yeah, and also, like, God, I had to do that with, <laughs> with like, fan-translated manga. Like, I was reading Bleach. Scanlations! I was reading <laughs> it. Bleach as it was coming out in Japanese. Bless the translators. But there were so many little asterisks that were like, this actually means this. And I'm like, okay, well, you could have just translated that word then. <laughs> I'm not here for a Japanese lesson. I mean, I kind of was in, the, in that weeby way, but you know. 
a lot of fan subtitles and fan manga translations would keep the suffix mm-hmm. when characters addressed each other. So they would keep Chan, yeah. Kun, San. And I get that it's like, I think that's just a thing where the structures of society are so different that you either have to keep those in, but then also explain to your audience what it means, like, outside of the official translation, like, with an asterisk, like, Mm -hmm. what a character means when they add son to the end of someone's name. Or you just have to ignore it and lose something in translation. Like, there's no perfect solution to the way that the Japanese attach suffixes to people's names in order to denote, like, how familiar they are with yeah. one another and how formally they're addressing one another. I definitely appreciated that in most of the mangas that I read because usually there was a relationship that like changed within the uh, yeah, like, progress of Yeah, and if the... someone if someone changes how they're referring to a character like that can denote like a like a character growth moment yeah. that might otherwise be lost in the translation if you ignore it. So there's just there's some things the way that languages and like societies are crafted that's you're just going to lose it. Like if someone calls you like, you know, your name, San, that's like roughly the same formality as calling someone Mr. or Mrs. Yeah. So I've noticed actually in the um in the fruits basket and we're we're watching the dub. Yes. The English dub of the 19 or of the 19 of the 2019 remake and I find the dub is actually pretty good. And so one character refers to the main character as Honda San, which is her mm-hmm. last name and then the suffix san. So that's like pretty formal especially for a teenager addressing his friend. Mhm. Like most other people call her Toru, which is her first name. Yeah. And so the way they translate that into English is that they always have him calling her Miss Honda. It's so cute. Because yeah, like it's it's important enough within their relationship that he still he addresses her pretty formally, even in the context of like Japanese formal suffixes. Mm-hmm. It's like strange or like unusual that a teenager would refer to another teenager in their class living in their house that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so cute. But though. then on the other side of that, I've noticed that they've just not translated some suffixes. Like some characters will just straight up call other characters Senpai. Or Chan. Yeah. Like there's one character who has a nickname, like a cutesy nickname for everyone, and they've just not translated it. They just yeah. have that character call someone so and so Chan. Yeah. And that's weird. I don't think I've ever seen an anime just in the like official English dub translation just keep in the suffixes. Because I guess now that anime is so mainstream most American audiences at least are somewhat familiar with that. The ones, like, they kind of are like... Like, they don't translate senpai either in the 2019... Which is crazy to me. That it's that's, nuts like, to me. well known enough now that they haven't even bothered to translate it. Like, I, I appreciate it. I think it's cool. I just think it's very interesting because I, like, I witnessed that change. They didn't ever use that before. Like... That was a that was an otaku phrase. <laughs> well, and like, because like San, like there's a rough English approxi- or translation for that, which is Mrs. or Mister. Mm-hmm. But there's no real English equivalent for the term senpai. No. So it's harder to translate or to even get the idea of like what those characters are meaning. Mm-hmm. Where like kids in high school usually just talk to each other mm-hmm. and call each other by their first <laughs> names and, you know, occasionally have nicknames. And there's no, I mean, there is like a hierarchy structure, but that's not like codified in the language usually. No. Like you get, uh, the most you get is like cheesy 80s movies where like the mean antagonist bully of the movie will call the group of our heroes like freshmen or something. Yeah. But only ever in that context. Like it's not something normal that usually kids refer to one another as no. in casual conversation. <laughs> no. So like San and Mr. and Mrs. is like kind of easy to get away with because there's an, a there's an equivalent English approximation to that phrase. But there's really not for Senpai. So the fact that they just threw it in there and they're like, if you don't fucking know it, too bad. Yeah, like, I, I, yeah, I don't dislike it. I'm just surprised that they, they did. I actually appreciate it. I think it's cute. Mm-hmm. It makes me happy. I have been, because I, I started crocheting again, because I got jealous of y'all crocheting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yay! Um, I'm making my friend a wedding present. It's going to be really cute. But 
I decided, you know, I'm going to bite the bullet and watch the My Hero Academia dub because I watched it originally sub. And in the sub, you know, he calls him Kachan because they grew up together. And he still calls him that in the dub. So she's like, oh, okay. Mm. He just moved with it. But they don't use a ton of honorifics otherwise. It's just sort of there. <laughs> Yeah. And they have to explain why he calls him Deku and, like, the kanji for it. And there's little stuff like that where I'm like, aww, you explained that so quickly. <laughs> yeah, because they don't do that, like, because the only one who really gives them cutesy nicknames in Fruits Basket is one character. Like, if they have a nickname for a character, it'll just be, like, part of the name. But this one character calls Shigure Shichen, and they just have that in there. That's the only one that I've recognized so far. We haven't finished it. But yeah, in the original dub, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> they just did away with all that. Yeah. Like, it, it's it's cool and I like it. It's an interesting, like, Comparison. evolution. In... Yeah. They're like, it's weird to see the, the dub translations, like, respond to changes in the audience, like, yeah. in real time. Well, yeah. It's like, um, the thing that Skate just did, which... I don't love, but mm. uh, the progress. Mm. Um, is that what this is? Well, <laughs> that or they're trying to be PC or something. I don't know. Somebody made a capital C choice, but they in the um, in the sub in the like actual Japanese version. I want to say the line is like "What's up, bitches?" and then in the dub. They translated it to, like, hey, bitches, bros, and non-binary hoes, which is like... <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> is it? Fine. I like it. I think that's funny. <laughs> well, and to be clear, I don't have an issue with non-binary becoming more common in the English lexicon, but it just felt like such a ham-fisted attempt at being PC or, you know, big air quotes, woke. So changes like that are incredibly frustrating. And while I don't want to land on the side of the bigot racist, I kind of hate it. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that sure was a whole thing. Sus. Derp. Derp kind of killed me. Yeah, that's weird that's to me dangerous. because like that translation like changes the original meaning of the Japanese line. Which I don't love. I don't think translations should really ever change the meaning of the original text. Yeah. You know what we haven't talked about in a while, though? Hit me. Aunties. <laughs> <sighs> so Attack on Titan. <laughs> I have not seen a single goddamn frame of Attack on Titan by, you know, God's mercy alone. So I'm super glad. I, I, I heard that it's taken some, like, totally fascist... Turns. Yeah, I've never watched it. No, it's and... like there's a city and there's there's giant freaky monsters that come to destroy the city, like Godzilla, and these kids have to... Well, they're not kids, they're like teenagers and young adults, but they have to fight them off, you know, like a, like a war. Like an Ava, but less interesting. Well, because in Ava, it was all about the character's own, like, psychological turmoil. Exactly. And it wasn't a direct correlation to, like, imperialism. Yeah. And they were also aliens. Like, yes. fully just extra-dimensional beings. Yeah, it was more interesting to look at the i'm sorry the art and attack on titan is hideous that is honestly the thing that kept me from watching it when it first became popular i think the art style the animation art style in attack on titan is just gross it's and just that's why ugly. i don't watch it i'm so or at sorry least that's why i didn't start watching it i yeah i can't man it's just hard to look at <laughs> yeah it's hard to look it at it is man sorry attack on titan fans y'all yeah. are allowed to like it i'm not saying you're not yeah you're perfectly fine to like it. I'll listen to all your rants about it. I actually, I love listening to people talk about stuff that I have no, like, personal interest in, because it's just, it's just interesting to me. I just think it's fun. So, like, if you want to talk to me about Attack on Titan, hit me up, but I just will not watch it. I I just about shit myself, Kendra, when I found out you liked Wolf's Reign. Aw, really? Yeah, nobody I knew had watched it, even though it was on Adult Swim. Yeah, I loved Wolf's Reign. That was Rain. the year I lived in Texas, and so I caught it on uh, Adult Swim. Yeah. Because I remember it was the first time you came down to visit... And I have the soundtrack on my phone, and I, I would hit shuffle, soundtrack. and I tried to, yeah. like, go buy it really fast, and Aww. you were like, oh, I know what that is. And I was like, yeah. you do? 
Yeah. It was by, uh, oh, I should get her name right. Yeah, Yoko Kano. Yoko Kano, yeah. Uh, who composes a lot of anime soundtracks, and I, they're, they're great. Dude, the soundtrack for Wolf's Rain, even if you don't watch Wolf's Rain, the soundtrack for Wolf's Rain is great. Yeah, also- But do watch Wolf's Rain. Yeah, probably most famously, Yoko Kano did the soundtrack to Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Which is maybe the greatest anime soundtrack ever. So she's got high credentials, but mm-hmm. also just a ton of other stuff that I've never heard of. And man, anime titles are wacky. Mm-hmm. Terror in Residence. Oh, that's apartment. actually that's actually uh, Shinichiro Watanabe's other, well, most recent series, I guess, oh. after uh, Samurai Champloo. Yeah. Shout out to Samurai Champloo. Which I personally like more than Cowboy Bebop, which is saying something. I should, I should point out that's really saying something because I love Cowboy Bebop. It's gonna get you canceled, babe. I don't. I will drop it in the comments. (laughs) Tell me how you feel about it. Samurai Champloo or Cowboy Bebop? Yeah, dude, Samurai Champloo is just my shit, man. It just hit all of my all of my buttons. It's so good. Um, but anyway, so the reason I bring up Attack on Titan is because a prominent fan artist sure was outed to their family over Attack on Titan fan art. Yay! um... (laughs) Outed to their conservative Iraqi family in the nation of Iraq. Yeah. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Something where that can be extremely dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. You could have killed someone. I mean, that's dangerous in America today. That's yeah. dangerous in Canada today. Yeah. And they are fine, right? Like. Yeah. Apparently the person outed them to their brother, I think it was, and they had already known. So okay. thankfully they are okay. Thank that's... fucking merciful God. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why this is news. But not everybody accepts gay people. Well, they know that, Kelty, because otherwise outing them to their family wouldn't be a substantive threat. They exactly know what they're doing you and the harm that they're someone. doing. You kill someone. Yes, they yeah. think that's an appropriate reaction to fan art they don't like. They don't care, Kelty. You're wrong, though! Yes, they're, they are wrong. <sighs> it's just, it's, it's so scary and weird, and I don't get it. I don't understand why this is something that people are doing. Because think- feels before reels. I hated that. <laughs> So yeah, if you um if you aren't aware, so there's this fan artist from the Attack on Titan fandom. They are Iraqi, they live in Iraq, and they sure were outed to a family member for drawing the bad ship. And also 100% like straw manning, but there were also claims that they were racist and well, lesbophobic. <laughs> I, I saw that one. The the exact tweet was, how can some people be gay and also racist? More like LGBKKKT. Mm-hmm. And people were claiming that was anti-black somehow. That yeah. the acknowledgement that racism exists in the queer community it do. was <sighs> racist because... They used the letters KKK in the acronym to, like, make a point. Yes. Which I thought was clever. It, it is clever and true. It's very so true. So why are people mad about it? How is it <laughs> racist to point out that racism exists? Yeah, it's not... I don't... What the fuck? Because, like, yeah, they're right. Who, like, and a person, again, to my knowledge, is not white. This is also... Something that I'm seeing a lot uh, on Twitter lately, and it's like, how can I be blank? I'm blank. And it's like, easily. Like, yeah, that's like, sorry, that's like gender studies 101, y'all. Yeah. Like, I don't think people realize how racist queer people can be. Or, yeah, for that matter, I don't think most people know how homophobic queer yeah. people can be. Yeah. Or, or lesbophobic, or just hateful toward other queer people. Biphobic. Very yes, hard. biphobic. Very Maybe hard. the... We are not nice to each other. We're, yeah. we're terrible and mean and discriminatory to one another. And it's heartbreaking. Nobody hates gay people more than gay people. Yeah. Yeah, like, especially, like, if you if you are on Grindr, it is completely oh, yeah. commonplace to put your racial preferences for sexual partners in your description, in your... And they make fun little rhymes out of it. No fat femmes or Asians. No fat femmes or Asians. Oh, there's one that's like, vanilla and spice, no, no chocolate, chocolate or rice. rice. 
Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Meaning white and Latino people, yes. Black and Asian people, no. And that's just fucking normal. I've <laughs> also just seen people say vanilla only. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is super uncomfortable. So that's just, that. that is how the population of Grindr conducts itself, at least in cities I've been in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the the lesbophobia comment was based on a tweet. Columbo... Aren't they a lesbian? Yes. So they tweeted, Attack on Titan has some pretty shocking moments, but nothing scares me more than a lesbian getting pregnant, which... <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking funny! Same yeah. fucking mood! <laughs> As a woman in a relationship with another woman, an unexpected pregnancy is my greatest fear. <laughs> well, so I had to talk to our friend who does watch the show, because I was like, wait... So what's the context, though? Yeah, there's no way there's a canonical lesbian character in Attack on Titan. I would know that. So I don't I don't know if they're canonically lesbian. I do know that they only have kids because it's like they have to produce a bunch of kids because they're of a certain like yeah. rank in society. And they don't For like the fatherland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they didn't want them. So, like, 100%, like, yeah, that's my worst nightmare. (laughs) Yes. Dude, that's not lesbophobic. That just hates kids. Like, God, yeah, as someone who fucking does not want kids, being forced through whatever means, whether it's a government, you know, population program or just a drunken one night stand, being forced through whatever means to carry a child to term and then raise it is maybe my greatest fear. (laughs) Oh, yeah, same. I have nightmares about that shit. I Pregnancy have... is not something I ever want to experience. Genuine and nightmares. If there is a character who doesn't want children, whatever her sexual orientation, and she is forced to carry children, yeah, that's that's terrible and bad and not at all hateful or discriminatory. No. A lot of people don't want kids, whether or not they're gay. Yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I don't see ha- at all how that is lesbophobic. That's just funny. A lot of le- yeah, that's just true. That's... Th- I know, I know a fucking lesbian made that joke because, <laughs> because that's, that's a real lesbian Because she's dating a lesbian yeah. who makes that joke. Like, come on, people. Well, they, it, they're they reaching. They needed something more than this person draws art that we don't like. They needed a list mm-hmm. of sins, as Lindsay would put. Yeah, they needed oh, to sure. have a righteous cause mm-hmm. to attack this person over not just their fan art is problematic because it's the two boys I don't like kissing. Yeah. I did like one of their tweets, though, in response to this post being um, outed. If I go to jail or die and stand before God and tell him it's because I drew two men kissing, I will snitch on all of you to God. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hard same. Y'all are yeah. going to hell with me, bitch. Oh, yeah. I keep receipts. So yeah, no, it's it's heinous, it's disgusting, it's typical anti-behavior. It's so completely transparent that they don't actually believe their own bullshit of caring about quote-unquote real people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because in order to win the ship war, they will put real queer people in mortal danger. Yep. And will do it knowingly and happily. Because, yeah, this was not, like, casually mentioning that this person, you know, had a girlfriend or something, or something that is revealing, and they said it in front of a parent or whatever, and they didn't know that they weren't supposed to say anything. This is on purpose outing someone to their family, because they know, or they expect... That the family will react poorly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get more blatant and transparent than that. Yep. So I fucking don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that aunties are, are concerned somehow for the suffering of real people. And they're, they're expressing that concern in the most convoluted way possible through policing people's fictional tastes in fandom. Fuck off. Like, I wasn't born yesterday. (laughs) What are you talking about? No, you don't. You just want to win the ship war. Ship wars are as old as fuck. Yep. Except now they have body counts. Yeah, like, this isn't my first fucking rodeo, kids. Yeah. So they deleted all the art off of their not safe for work art Twitter. And they have a private Twitter mm-hmm. that's locked, thank God. And as far as the situation goes, I mean, it could not have ended in a better way, all things considered. They are safe mm-hmm. and alive. But goddamn, the mind boggles. 
at the risk of using slang that will date us. <laughs> it is just mask off. It is just not bothering to even pretend that they have concern for real actual human beings because, like, we know that they don't. And anyone who interrogates their ideas or their ideology for more than a second can see obviously that they don't, but they claim to very loudly. And like, that's a pretty righteous cause to have to protect innocent victims from harm. So when you hear that initially, you're like, yeah, of course that's a good thing because Mm -hmm. protecting people from harm is good. But then when you hear that the way they want to do that, to protect people from harm, is to control what you can and can't enjoy in a fictional space with fictional people, and that's somehow going to save save real people from real harm. And also, if you resist us, we're going to cause material harm to your mortal safety. That seems pretty self-defeating to me, which is why I think antis are a laughingstock. But hopefully this shows other people that antis are a laughing stock too, because there's just a plain black and white example of teenagers trying to get someone killed for being queer. Like, I don't want to fucking hear it. I don't want to hear how they're actually campaigning for the rights of harmed peoples. No, you're fucking not. And you're deluding yourself if you think for one instant that you are. Oh yeah, no, I, uh, I've fully gotten cyberstalked by, by somebody. Yeah. Who, like, tracked my location and shit because he didn't like that I was defending the concept of fiction and so called me kitty (laughs) diddler. For, like, months. Months. And, like, knew just, the city that we lived in and was like, want to meet me on this major intersection and fight? And I was, like a fist fight? <laughs> like, what are like, you, 12? No, no, dude, I don't. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna fight you, kid. That Because we know. Physical and, assault! What do you want? And, like, that's fucking trial by combat. <laughs> like, oh yeah, whoever wins the physical confrontation had the more just argument. Yeah. Like, why don't we just fucking <laughs> sacrifice a goat and see what the blood tells us? Yeah, like, like if that's how first we're, off... If that's how what we're deciding what right and wrong is... First off, that's bullshit. Second, you don't want to fight me. You no, really you don't want to fight Kelty. She's got, she's got I, Spurg strength. I have the strength of autism and anime on she- my side. <laughs> You just don't want to do that. She fights like a spider monkey, just all limbs. I was going to say, it's like fighting a herd of possums. (laughs) (laughs) It is, and it's scary, and all of my friends know this. They're all glad that I'm on their side. Even if I weren't, like, if even, even if, if I didn't just, fight uh, like a spider monkey, you're still wrong. Yeah, besting me in combat is not the way we determine <laughs> whose argument is right. You're not gonna, you're not gonna prove you're right this by punching me in the face, this isn't dude. Arthurian England. <laughs> but like, yeah, if you want to argue with me on Twitter, that's fine. I'm not gonna fight you in a parking lot, though. Like those are jokes. Stop asking. <laughs> Those are those it's are fun so time weird. jokey jokes. I'm not actually gonna fight you in a parking lot. That was that was a different time. I'm different now. That was when I was in college. <laughs> I don't fight people behind the Dairy Queen anymore. <laughs> they have a sign with my face on it and a big strike yeah, through. Yeah, like do not serve this person. <laughs> If you see her in the parking lot, call the police. Yeah, inform a manager immediately. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and you know, I've noticed the discourse has shifted a little bit these past couple weeks to, to, we should empathize with aunties. They're going through, you know, hard things too. They could be going through abusive relationships or having depression and shit like that. And it's like, cool, I I go through that. So? Yeah. I don't suicide people. So I'm not going to show a lot of empathy for the people who are outing people for fan art. For fan art. (laughs) Yeah. Here's the funny thing. I do. I do show empathy to those people. I try. That's the thing. Like, I do empathize with aunties to a degree because, like, you know, to quote Mademoiselle Contrapoints, (laughs) trolls are people too. Mm -hmm. And they have human motivations for their behavior. They're not just, like, Saturday morning cartoon villains, like, conspiring of ways to be as evil as possible today. Very real human hurt and pain and anguish motivates them to be shitheads. I'm not not saying at all. Well, usually, yeah. Sometimes sometimes you just have a Patrick Bateman in the group who is (laughs) just a sociopath. And, like, 
but that's exceedingly rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And most people have very understandable motivations for what they're doing, but an understandable motivation is not a justifiable motivation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of suffering in the world right now, and I understand wanting to do something to combat it, because we feel very powerless, and we feel at risk at all times, like we feel threatened by our government, by our people, by our environment that's telling us to fuck off and die, and I completely understand people want to do something to combat all of this threat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us don't have a far reach. We don't have a huge audience or a huge scope or we don't have funding or we don't have a big reputation. We just have Twitter. Yep. And so people who do, who have this, you know, angst of wanting to change the world somehow for the better, utilize Twitter and Twitter mobs, to attack the people they can reach. And the people they can reach are not part of the problem. The people who are part of the problem are so insulated from Twitter mobs Mm -hmm. that there's no hope of ever affecting change in them. So they, they affect change on who they can reach. They terrorize who they can reach. They take their rage out on who they can reach. And it's usually people just like them. Mm-hmm. Yep. People who are marginalized and people who are ostracized, people who are subjugated, abused, abused. And, and because taking your anger out on an innocent person is pretty universally accepted as a bad thing, they have to concoct absolutely batshit insane justifications for why taking their anger out on this person is actually a righteous cause Uh and not just the feeble like mad tantrum of a child with no power yeah so they do that they're like drawing this fan art makes you a pedophile liking this ship makes you an abuser and a nazi sympathizer Mm. and like all of these ludicrous things that don't don't hold water At all. Like, they collapse at the tiniest pushback. Mm -hmm. But they defend it feverishly, because if they can't abuse random people on the internet, if they can't take out their rage on who they can reach, well, boy, howdy, they're just gonna lose their fucking minds. And then they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to do something about their, their own character flaws. Yeah. And they sure shit don't wanna do that, cause that sounds like hard work. So, like, that's basically all it is. It's just when they put actual people's lives in danger, when they drive someone to suicide or hospitalization, that is the limit of where my empathy ends. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, I don't think empathy means agreeing with them. No. Cause I absolutely don't agree with aunties at all, ever. No. But I, empathize with them because I want to understand them Mm -hmm. because they're a fucking problem. I try very hard. I don't even like to swear at aunties because I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't like to hurt people. That's the difference, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) If there's one moral truism I will stick to until my dying day, it's that people are bad and they will do bad things just because they are bad. (sighs) So anyway, did we talk about the thing? I guess so. I mean, did we? I don't know. Well, just uh, anime and aunties and aunties in anime and <laughs> fascism anti-anime and... <sighs> <sighs> Thanks, anime. Anyway, y'all y'all got a happy? <laughs> well, our, our happy is actually that we're watching Fruits Basket. Yeah. And yeah, I've never seen it. It's this, for anyone who doesn't know, it's this super popular... It's just about basically, like broad strokes. It's about this girl who heals an entire family of trauma by basically just being nice to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a whole family of fucking weirdos who have never really interacted with a like just regular nice person. Yeah. So the fact that this girl is just like an average amount of nice to them alters their entire worldview. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's one of those fun animes that's like kind of magical. Well, that's the thing. It's like mostly about teenagers going to high school and it's just like dramatized with some fantasy elements to make it feel more like how it actually feels to be in high school. Mm. Like, because when you're in high school, everything kind of feels like a life and death battle or everything feels like you're having to save someone's life. And it's not, of course, but I find when anything, not just anime, but when there's some kind of like fantasy element in a show or series that is otherwise ostensibly about teenagers and their teenage problems, it's mostly just to like up the drama 
of to what it feels like attending <laughs> high school. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. And it's a good, sweet anime, and it's cheerful and it's positive. Very, yeah cheesy and like low stakes like i said it's like they up the drama but it's still pretty low stakes overall yes like like i mean it's it it has like dramatic moments and like if if you're like me you'll cry (laughs) but like it's not like you're not sitting there with anxiety the whole time (laughs) like it's just emotional moments the worst that can happen is like someone gets their feelings hurt yeah or someone gets locked up in a room for the rest of their life. Yeah, well, that's kind of a... <laughs> that's kind of a big which deal. Is, which is a metaphorical hurting of the feelings. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure most of our listeners have watched Fruits Basket. But if you haven't watched the reboot, you really should. The animation's beautiful. The dub is still great. And it's it's fun. Fun! I have, um... I've been listening to a lot of my vinyls this week. Aww. But especially my musical vinyls. And especially, especially Dear Evan Hansen. I am on a Dear Evan Hansen jam again. Aww. Probably because I'm melancholy and it's a sad musical. <laughs> it is. It's a very sad musical. I don't know musical. if that's quite a happy... <laughs> Yeah, it is a weird one. Like I've never I've never seen it, but from what I know the premise is dark. Yeah. yeah. It's about this kid who kills himself and another kid who like had no friends and so he like lies to everybody and says that they were friends to gain some sort of like social sympathy. And then the lie spirals out of control and he becomes friends with the dead kid's family and it's a musical. <laughs> yeah. Real real good musical though. Makes me cry a lot. <laughs> well, also a happy is that I bought you Dramatical Murder. It should be in your <gasps> Oh, I didn't even account, check so. Steam. Yay! That's going to be next week's happy. <laughs> it's nonsensical. I hope you enjoy it. Yay! You'll love it. I know you. Well, you'll love it. I'm excited to see where my heart takes me. <laughs> Exactly, and it's wacky, and it's fun, and once you've finished it, we can watch the anime, which is... The anime's okay. It's great. not great. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Well, then, if you want to find us online, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Blissfully Show. I post links to our YouTube there. If you're watching us on YouTube, hi! Let us know your thoughts on anime. Sub, stub, Samurai Champloo versus Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. yeah. And like, subscribe, comment, all that, all that stuff. You know what to do. And then I guess until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. That's like a problematic reverse Uno card. <laughs>